behind, and they were clean picks, but uh, we stole the ball quite a bit. Yeah, we did, and you know, uh, that was, you know, going back to the other night, the difference between the other night and tonight was our, our, we played more as a team defense. Our help was better tonight, and people were stepping off, and, and you know, the, the defense is looking at one person, somebody stepping off and able to get in there and, and, and knock the ball away or even get a steal on a lot of occasions or, or just force the person into an un, unforced turnover. But, um, you know, our, our defense is really good. You take a look at their scoring by quarters. They had seven in the fourth quarter, but, you know, six, 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 seven. You know, if, if we could hold teams to under 10 in oh, yeah. every quarter coming out, that's that's really what I like to see on the defense in the court. Now, Scott had pointed out to me, and I was just amazed at this, that uh, we had an 18-2 run with Kelsey Page on the bench. Yeah, yeah Kelsey had a tough night, uh, you know, getting in some early foul trouble, and she was frustrated. But, you know, that's 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 been kind of our mojo here the second part of the season is kids have stepped up. You know, I thought, you know, coming off the bench, JC gets eight in the first half, and, and you know, that's what you what you really want as a coach. You, you know, you're one of your, actually our leading scorer goes to the bench. We, we bring somebody else in new and we don't lose a beat. I yeah. mean, you know, that's a really nice thing to have. And I felt like we did that tonight. It felt like in the past, sometimes when she's gotten into foul trouble, we haven't felt like anybody wanted to even attempt to take a shot. We didn't have that tonight. Did it a very nice job of, of moving around and moving the ball around. So. So I had to kind of bag on the ladies there in the first quarter. The, we kind of gapped it out two or three times on the defensive glass down there, and Bloyd just got right in there. And I go, oh, my, <laughs> we're in for a long night if we don't get that squared away. And, you know, I don't think it, I saw it happen again the rest of the ball game. As Scott said, second quarter, I think they cleaned that up right away. You know, that was one thing we talked about in the huddle after the first quarter was keeping them off the boards. You know, we're not a we're not a big team, but um, we're, we're usually a pretty decent rebounding team. I mean, JC and Riley, um, for their high, do a good job of getting off the ground and elevating. Allie does a pretty good job of getting, you know, position. And, and we do usually do a pretty good job of that. We just, a couple of those first half, one of them I remember went just went through somebody's hands. You know, it, it was kind of unfortunate, but, you know, it, we took care of the rest of the game. And that's, you know, that's a, uh, you know, nice to see the girls respond to, you know, after we talk about those things. Well, Coach, it was pretty exciting. I, I felt like we talked about the, uh, the turnover factor. One of the things that uh, we were concerned about coming in, uh, especially after the great second quarter, that is we, we would have a letdown in the third quarter. Uh, Dallas Cox made some adjustments on their defense, only held us to two points. That was mainly a defense. We had some looks, missed a few opportunities, but our key there was we held them to just six points. Yeah. And that, I think, was the difference in the fact that we held them, as you said earlier, six, six, and six, and seven points. Nice defense. Up, it, by the way. Like you said, you only get two points in the corner. I, we were stuck on um, 25, seemed like forever, you know. And, <laughs> 335, uh, I think, is when we finally yeah. scored. <laughs> Riley, Sorry. Finally got the front, <laughs> Riley finally got that layup to go in, you know. And, and But, you know, the whole time that's going on, we're, we are playing defense. And, yeah, and we are. that's one thing we've, you know, we've kind of made, been our thing with the, with the second half of the season here is we play good defense. And, and that's going to take us further in the end than the offensive end. And, and you know, I. I, I guess I can't say enough about how well we played defense tonight. I was, I was a little bit disappointed about our, you know, I thought we kind of had a little mental letdown coming out of the locker room, but, um, you know, I, we recovered in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they did a nice job. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations on a uh, big victory tonight uh, against uh, your first victory against the Blue Trojans. And what's interesting is um, that's, I uh, know, uh, no, uh, we, I think, had two victories in the last 25 attempts, is what Dale had said. One in the last nine is, that's still, that's a, a nice, that's a nice monkey to get off our back. Yeah. And it's a nice job coaching by you and a great job by the girls. Please pass that on. But Lady Lions coming with the victory. Coach, we're going to have to, we're going to have to get ready for the boys matchup, but uh, congrats on a great victory. Thank you. Good game, guys. Good win, coach. Thanks, coach. Thank you. We will take a quick break, and we'll be back with some, uh, no, we'll go ahead and keep it here. Minneapolis Lady Lions come away with a victory tonight by a score of 39 to 27. Mike, I'll let you talk for a second while I get this switched over. Now, Dale, it was uh, a long time coming. Uh, those ladies uh, seemed like the Bloy Lady Trojans had our number for a number of years, and Dale looked back on the 
Last time we beat them was 2006. So, yes, we were uh, desperately ready for uh, a victory against Lloyd, and they uh, they get one here tonight. We're just three minutes away from tipping off the boys contest. As we mentioned, Bloyd whipped us up at uh, Bloyd. Yeah, they did. They uh, they had our number up there. We'll look through and six look back points. at six points. Six points, 44 to 38. Uh, Andrew Yoxel led the way for us with 13, but uh, uh, Austin Buggy and Zach Brummer both in double figures for them as Grayson George was only held to eight points. And uh, that's something that we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to play. We're going to have to come out tonight on the boys matchup and play some hustle defense. And we're going to have to be able to shut them down and hit our points. There's a lot of marbles right on the line tonight, guys, in this game. If we win, we got the league out right. Right. If we lose, we have to beat Russell to assure ourselves of a tie. A tie. So we win tonight. The NCAA crowns ours by, by itself. Got uh, one game up right now on Beloit. If they beat us, they tie us. We'll have to beat Russell Tuesday to maintain that tie. So, big game. Yeah. Just one in the loss column, so yeah. it would mean that uh, we would kind of tie for the lead. But uh, as Dale mentioned, one so, uh, victory here tonight would put another one in the loss column for Bloyd and assure us of uh, the league championship. So they must be title. lacking one <coughs> league game. They've got two more league games to play. They're playing four games in five days. Four games in five days. Friday, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <coughs> wow. This Minneapolis is, is 17 four. and one and nine and one. Beloit is 13 and three, seven and two. Yeah. And they're going to be tired puppies when Tuesday goes. <laughs> Come Tuesday, yeah. I don't know who they, I don't know who they've got matched up with the next few days. Who's their league matchups? You know. Uh, they play Southeast of Saline tomorrow. Riley, Republic County on Monday, and finish with Smith Center on Tuesday. Oh goodness! Wow. Southeast and, uh, and Republic, Republic County. Republic County. So. Minneapolis Lions and the Bloyd Trojans. Bloyd in black, Minneapolis in their home white. We will have the starting lineups here in just a second. Dale, I don't know who their injured player is. I'll try to find that out real quick. The Trojans lead this uh, series 94 to 73. But at Minneapolis, we lead it 43 wins to 31 defeats. So uh, we have an advantage over them at Minneapolis. This is the longest running series against any opponent. The Floyd Trojans. Wow, I just got some, uh, got a word. Austin Budke is their uh, injured player in crutches. That won't help them at all. Wow. As, uh, have you been going through the starting lineups? No, I haven't. So, okay, I will get them real quick for Minneapolis. Actually, we'll get Beloit first. Uh, number number 33 for the Beloit Trojans, Luke Shamberg. Number three, Tanner Finney. Number 22, uh, Marvin Darko. He was the uh, big guy transfer, uh, foreign exchange student. And number 31, yeah. Slate Crone. And number 35, Zach Rubber. Jack Rubber's another one that had a big game against us for the Minneapolis Lions. Grayson George, Zach Allison, Casey Argenbright, Kyler Macy, and Andrew Yoxel. And I hope we see Dylan Crossing tonight. I'm sure we will. I don't know how long. Don't know how we'll long. See. So Minneapolis uh, in their home white, Beloit uh, in their black, and we will have uh, the ball game here in just a second. Guys, an interesting stat I noticed in the paper this morning in the area scoring. Uh, Grayson George has 54 made trays on the season. The closest is somebody like out of Goodland with 39. Oh, really? Somebody else has 34. Oh, a lot of 20s. Grayson is just way out in front of the pack area-wise with made cool. total of threes. Dale had mentioned Grayson with 54 trays made this year. The nearest uh, player in the area-wide was 39. So wow. he's got a, quite a lead. Beloit yeah. wins the tip, and they get it in the hands of Schamberg. Schamberg back in the hands of Finney. Finney a junior. Uh, actually, they're uh, 
They've got uh, two juniors and a senior, Darko on the outside. He drives in and the steal right there by the Minneapolis line. Zach Gallison with a nice tip away. Nice help defense and the turnover right away. Casey Argenbright drives, picks it up, gets it over to Zach Allison in the lane. He's got to get out of the lane. That's three, three seconds, seconds every yeah. time. You well, know, I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> well, that's just as good. We threw it backcourt. <laughs> so, uh, that's because the whistle had blown on that. So, Lloyd will bring it down as Finney brings it down against Casey Argenbright. They give it over to Brummer. Brummer on the outside. Another nice job by the Minneapolis Lions with the turnover, forcing the turnover. We were right in the passing lane and uh, playing our man very good on the defensive end. Ball tipped in the hands of Grayson George. Grayson will drive, shot up and no good. And rebounded by Darko. And I can't up. believe Casey got away with that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. That's pretty amazing. But it does. And plus he threw it backward. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that or not. Would that have been a backward? No. So no possession, didn't have feet he set. Tossing it. Oh, Schamberg throwing Andrew Yoxel around. Yeah, nice job. Nice job. That's that's a that's a pickup call as excuse me, Crone had thrown Andrew Yoxel off to the side. And that's time Crone goes to the ground with his first personal. Minneapolis will have the ball underneath their own bucket. Score this ball game here. Grayson George the inbound gets it to Andrew Yoxon. There, Darko guarding George tight. Argenbright on the outside. He'll take the shot up and good. Nice job, Casey Argenbright. Ball will go back in the hands of Schamberg to bring it down the right hand side. He drives all the way in the lane. Shot up and good. Nice job by Luke Schamber, 5'11 senior. Argenbright brings it down the right hand side. Casey back to Macy. Oh, wow. Nice hustle by Kyler. That was some jumping by Finney there to get up in the air on that one. Finney on off outside. a quick little left hander there. He's cat quick. Zach Allison back to Yoxel. Yoxel backward to Argenbright. Casey looks down low. Back to Zach Allison. Back to Kyler Mason. Argon right on the outside. He'll pick it up to Grayson for three. And it's partially blocked. Oh no. How in the world, yeah. Darko laughs at uh, Shoop as he walks by. <laughs> so I thought he tipped it. Balls back in the hands of Crone, and there's a turnover right there, yeah. So Casey Argenbright has thrown the ground. He gets up, they force the turnover on this side. Argenbright will bring it down. Knotted up at two, 5-18 in the first quarter. Zach Allison on the outside. Back to Kyler Macy, and the turnover right there, and a foul on Kyler with the reach in. Minneapolis' first foul. Casey, uh, Dylan Crossan, Garrett Pounds, and Garrett Doherty checking in for the Lions. As good to see Dylan Crossan. Welcome back, Dylan. On the floor for us. Glad you're feeling healthier. It's been a few days, hasn't it? <laughs> Quite a few days. Yeah. Finney on the outside, guarded by Macy. <clears throat> Gets it back to Crone. And Brummer will go to the line to shoot two as Dylan Crossan backed him underneath the basket and gets the foul. Brummer will go to the line to shoot two. Her shot is up and it is off the back of the rim. Second shot coming by the six foot four junior. Shot is up and it is good. He makes that one. Lloyd with their first lead of the ball game, three to two. Garrett Doherty on the floor. Grayson George on the outside gets it back to Macy. 
Macy rolls around, back to, to Crossan, off the mark, rebounded by Crone. Crone back to Schamberg, Schamberg will bring it down for the Trojans. Nice hustle by Kyler Macy right there as he nearly gets the pick. We'd sure like to see Dylan use the glass on that shot from the elbow and at least give it a 75% chance of going in. 3-2, Bloyd. Bloyd the inbounds here. They get it into Darko. Darko on the outside, looks down low to Brummer. Darko guarded by Alex Yoxel. Into to the inside, it's rebounded by, oh, wow, nice hustle by Darko. That's the first time I've seen somebody pick Jared Doherty's pocket in a long time. So three seconds in the lane, turnover will go back to Minneapolis. So far, Crown not having a good game for Beloit. Caught with the three second problem there as number 10, Veter comes in. Darko gets a break. Checking in is Peyton Vetter for the Trojans. And Lloyd will step out of bounds and stay with Minneapolis. Also checking in is number five, Josh Heston. Vetter, a freshman. Casey Ardenbright will bring it down across the timeline after the inbounds. Casey drives, and he'll be fouled on the floor by Schamberg, I believe. Schamberg with his first personal foul. So, so uh, Minneapolis getting ready to get Andrew Yoxel, Zach Allison, and Grayson George back in for Dylan Cross and Alex Yoxel and Garrett Pounds. Darko comes back in. That's, you're going to see Darko on Grayson the entire night, I think. Grayson comes out, Darko will come out. Andrew's going to have to have a big night for us tonight as well. Three to two. Andrew Yoxel backs his man in. Nice job. He'll be fouled by Brummer, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. You're absolutely right. Uh, Casey and uh, Andrew are going to have to step up and have big games here tonight. Yoxel, 72% free throw shooting. First shot coming by the junior, Andrew Yoxel. Shot is up and it's off the front of the rim. He'll adjust on this one, I have a feeling. So. He misses his first and then he hits about eight in a row. And he makes that one. Nice job by Andrew Yoxel. Tied up at three here. Darko inbounds it to Schamberg. Schamberg guarded by Garrett Doherty. They will toss it down to Vetter. Shot up and good by the freshman. He drains one. Casey Argenbright back to Grayson George. Grayson guarded on the outside into Zach Allison. Zach, yeah, he'll be fouled in the lane. Nice job, Zach, by uh, Andrew Yoxel. I'm not sure who that foul's on. We'll find out here in just a second. Foul's on number five, which is Josh Heston. Number five, Heston against Yoxel at the line. Shot is up and good. This is the first one to roll in. I'm counting, Mike. 3.22 left to go here in the first quarter. Second shot coming. It's up and it is good as well. Kyler Macy will check in for Garrett Gordy for the Lions. Great crowd here tonight. Yes, great crowd both sides. Filled here on, I'd say to capacity. Schamberg drives, gets over to Hesting. Nice hustle, nearly picked off by Kyler Macy. Nice triple team over in that corner, Mike. Oh, we could squeeze some more in here if we needed to. Brummer gets it in. And he's gonna be fouled by Zach Allison. Zach with the defense on that side. Got a forearm in the chest. 
Zach's first personal foul. <coughs> Sec 13 foul. Brummer on the inside. Three point shot by Vetter. Off the mark and rebounded by Schamberg. And oh, wow. Schamberg will go. Actually, no, it'll be on the floor. Kyler Macy picks up his second personal foul. Garrett Doherty will check in. Boyd's inbounds. Coach Shoup is working the rest here. Brummer, and he walks with it. Yep. Good call. Full court press picked up by Beloit. It's an end to Argenbright. Argenbright's guarded by Schamberg. Casey will bring it down the right hand side. Grayson for three. And he's, oh, where is the, how is that not a foul? And Schamberg gets it in for the bucket. I don't know how in the world that that was not, regardless. It comes the other way, Schamberg gets the bucket, but wow. Hesting. Alex Hemacek, 5'8 junior, checks in for Beloit. Boy, they're deep, aren't they? Grayson on the outside, into Andrew. Here, Doherty in the lane, up, no good. And Andrew Ox is gonna be over the back, so. I think he got Zach. Nope. Oh, 13, good. Andrew Oxel, so. Ball will be in the hands of Schamberg to bring it down. 219, Lloyd up by two, seven to five. Schamberg on the outside to get it in. And nice job by Casey Argenbright as Casey shows the freshman what, <laughs> what you did. really done. <laughs> <laughs> nice job by Casey. So. Just enough shoulder to knock Casey down. Ball goes into Garrett Doherty. Garrett will bring it down for the Lions. Rolls to the right hand side. It's to Zach Allison. Zach in the way lane. Work, Zach. Nice way job, Zach. Way to go, buddy. Zach Brummer will get called for the foul. Zach will go to the line to shoot two. That should be Brummer's second foul, I believe. Yes. And Zach will go to the line to shoot two. Unfortunately, this is Zach's weakness here. 23% free throw shooting. We'll see if he can better it. Yep. And he does. Nice job. Zach Allison makes the first one as Crone comes in for Brummer. Got a little more arch on his shot there. Gave it a chance to go in, and it pretty good looking free throw shot right there. And he misses a bit. Oh, nearly gets his own rebound. He steps out of bounds. Nice job, Minneapolis. Zach Allison almost got the rebound as. The uh, Darko comes away, and, but he steps on the out of bounds line. Nice job, Zach Allison. Dylan Crossan will check in for him. It's a lane violation. <laughs> All will be inbounds to Andrew Yoxel. Back in the hands of Garrett Doherty. Garrett rolls around the right hand side, picks up his dribble, gets it back to Argenbright. Casey guarded tightly there. Nice job, Casey, and he tries in. Oh, wow. Casey gets called with the charge. And that was real medicine there. Foul is on Casey. That's his first personal. So he's usually good for one and usually <laughs> takes one or gives him one. So Schamberg brings it down, guarded by Doherty. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh my goodness, what kind of check? He had his hand up behind oh. his head, and then he called the block. He changed his wow. mind. <laughs> that is amazing. 
That's amazing. That was a weird call right there. <laughs> 17 fouls apiece. Oh, wow. 135 remaining in the first quarter. Shamberg will be at the line where he'll probably be perfect. Seven to six, Beloit with the lead. Minute 35 in the first. Shot is up and it is good. Second shot coming. And it is good as well. Nine to six, Beloit with the lead. Minute 33, Grayson been held in check so far as Darko is tight on him. And great, nice job, Andrew Yoxa. We'll just go to our other guy and there Andrew puts it in. Nice job, Andrew. Nice pass by Grayson. No hesitation, Andrew went right up for the shot and that's what he needs to do. Yep, nice job great there. Defense. Great, great job defense by Andrew Yoxel with the defense. Quick hands, had the tie up, but the walking violation came first. Garrett Doherty with the ball on the outside. He'll bring it and give it to Grayson George. Grayson back to Doherty. Doherty rolls around. Gets it back to Grayson. Grayson guarded by Darko at the top. And he'll be fouled on the inside by number 21. They've seen enough of the redhead already. They're collapsing on him big time when that ball goes down low. will be at the line for a one of one. First shot is on its way and it's off the back of the rim. So, rebounded by Vetter. Vetter will get it in the hands of Schamberg. Schamberg to bring it down for the Trojans. Gets it over to Crone. Crone back to Darko. Darko drives in on the left-hand side. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Darko, pretty solid little ball player. Got a jump stop. He took about a 10-foot jump. <laughs> well, he's got some. He is tall. Yes, Second he is. foul on Andrew Oxel. First shot is off the back from the rim. So Alex Oxel and Garrett Pounds check in. And also back in will be number three, Tanner Finney for Beloit. A little bit of a foul issue here as Yoxel heads to the bench with two. Second shot on its way and it's good. 10 to eight, Trojans with the lead. 36 seconds left. And Garrett Doherty brings it down for the lines. It's it to Alex Yoxel. Alex rolls around. Back to Doherty. 40 on the outside. Alex, back to Doherty. Grayson on the outside with 11 seconds left. Back to Pounds, back to Doherty. Back to Grayson, Grayson will drive up and, oh, can't get it. Oh, wow, nice follow by Dillon, but neither one could fall. Minneapolis trails at the end of the one, 10 to eight. And nice ball movement by the lines, just couldn't get it to fall. And we take, we trail at the end of one, 10 to eight. You're listening to 910, KNA.com, as well as Eagle Communication Channel 2. A car accident, high winds damaged your property? To protect you, the Scott Osherman Agency is the place to go. American Family Insurance has been providing security and peace of mind for over 80 years. Call the Scott Osherman Agency in Minneapolis, your American Family Insurance agent. CNR Plating and Kevin's crew would like to take this time to thank their many friends and customers for making their business what it is today. CNR Plating, Alliance Sports Backer, wants to wish the Minneapolis Lions a great season. CNR Plating, Alliance Sports Backer. The State Bank of Delphus and Glasgow and the Ottawa County Bank in Minneapolis are locally owned community banks committed to making your banking experience as easy and personal as possible. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Minneapolis, Kansas, and Mike, uh, uh, interesting first quarter of basketball. Well, Darko doing a pretty good job on defense on Grayson George. Uh, Grayson unable to get much space to get a shot off, but uh, a couple of them have been uh, 
tipped a little bit by Darko, but uh, they weren't seen that way by the referee. But we'll see if we can get him an open look. Andrew Yoxel. Oh, wow. So Darko picks up the foul as Argenbright was I, I didn't have my head turned. Yeah, they turn, They uh, had a real nice ball screen and uh, Darko tried to run through the screen and of course it's our man Argenbright takes the charge. A Little bit of acting maybe. Casey makes the first one, 10 to nine. Second shot coming by Argenbright. 7.45 left to go in the second quarter. Shot is up and it's good. I will go into Finney. Finney for the Trojans will bring it down. Finney rolls around the left hand side. Gets in his dribble. Gets it down low to Brummer. Back to Crone. Crone back to Schamberg. Back to Brummer. And Zach yeah. Allison will be fouled, called with the foul. A little late getting to the baseline. Brummer with the quick first step. Dylan Crossing getting ready to check in. Macy, Oxel, Allison, all with two fouls here, and we're just at the start of the second quarter. And Brummer makes the first one. Dylan Crossing checks in. Nine team fouls apiece, so double bonus from here on out, both squads. This, this half. Second shot is up, and he makes that one. 12 to two, Trojans with the two point lead. Argenbright to bring it down to set it up. Get it to Alex Yoxel, back to Argenbright, back to Alex. Alex to his brother Andrew, Andrew in the lane, shot up and no good, but Grayson George with the rebound and he's fouled by Darko. Nice job, Grayson George as he. Uh, well, you have to be fearless and we got the second foul on Darko, which could be a blessing here as he's in foul trouble. Grayson will get two shots here. Let's get one more this quarter. Grayson makes the first one. So, oh, that'll be huge if he brings them out. And they are. So, number 21, Nima checks, checks in, and they, I imagine they'll put Schamberg on them, but yeah. uh, they'll switch it around a little bit, but that's, uh, that could be, oh, an advantage for Grayson misses the second one. <clears throat> Lions struggling a little bit at the free throw line. Schamberg shot up, no good. And wow, Brummer comes out of nowhere. That ball hung on the rim just a little bit too long for the Lions. They had position, but Brummer comes in and takes it away and gets the putback. Nemechek on Grayson. Andrew Yox on the outside, back to Casey. Casey drives, shot up in the lane, no good. And out of bounds off the lines. Garrett Doherty will check in for ah, I would. For Grayson George. 14 to 11. Lloyd with the lead. 641 left to go in the first half. Last time down, Nemechek was guarding Grayson. Yeah, I know. That's what I was kind of shocked about that. Crone on the outside. Back to Brummer. Brummer, swing pass over to Finney. Finney will drive. Nice job by Casey Argenbright with the tip. Tips it out of bounds, it'll stay with Beloit. Great defensive play by Casey. 6.16 left to go here in the first half. Schamberg, little shot in the lane. Schamberg is so solid, and he's probably got, what, eight points so far tonight? Yep. 16 to 11, Beloit. Alex Shocks on the outside. Picks up his dribble, swing pass over to Garrett Doherty. Garrett back to Alex Shocks. Ah, Alex. <laughs> Gets the lane and he travels with it. And the turnover will go back to Beloit as they've got the five point lead. 5.53 left to go here in the first half. 16 to 11, Schamberg. Gives it to Crone. Crone on the outside. Gives it back to Nemechek. Back to Crone. Back to Schamberg. 
Back to Finney. Finney picks up his dribble. So back to Schamberg. Back to Crone. Swing pass over to Brummer. Brummer from the left corner out off the mark. Rebounded by Garrett Doherty. Scott, did we even see this uh, Finney kid up, the, up at Beloit? You know, I don't know if we did or not. Uh, Which I don't number? Know. Number three. Yes. Garrett Doherty shot up, no good. And we just can't get it, but a nice steal by Garrett Doherty. And the shot is good. Nice job, Garrett Doherty. And we needed some offense right there. Nice job by Garrett Doherty. And he takes it right into him, and he will go to the line for the and one. Foul is on the 31 Crone. That's his second foul. And Crone can't figure out why there wasn't a charging foul there. I wondered myself. Kind of, <laughs> yeah, it was close. It would have been close. I, uh, maybe that's a makeup for the one that he called, or there was yeah. a charge that he reversed it back. So. so Doherty's shot is up and good. Rolls it in. Back to a two point ball game. Grayson George checks back in for the Lions. Ball in Schamberg. Schamberg guarded by Doherty. Back to Finney. Finney on the outside. Finney rolls around. Gets it back to Nemechek. Nemechek looks for the cutter. Goes back the other direction. Finney for three. And rebounded by Grayson George. Back to Arden. Right. Casey will bring it down. Need to get a three right here by Grayson. Garrett Doherty. Back to Andrew Yoxel. Andrew, back to Doherty, back to Argerbright. Casey, swing pass over to Garrett Pounds. And there's a kick. Oh, no. Yeah, it was off. Yeah, thank you very I agree. Uh, this official called it because that was a kick on the floor by Black. Sorry, Dale. That's all right. I couldn't see the kick. I just saw Andrew's hand. Yeah, it's a <laughs> kick on the floor. So, Garrett Doherty on the outside. Back to Casey Ardenbrock for three. In and out. Rebounded by Vetter. Vetter will bring it down for the Trojans. Rebounded by Grayson George after the miss. Grayson will bring it down. Looking for his first points of the night. Back to Argenbrock. Casey rolls around the right-hand side. Casey will look to set this up for the Lions. Back to Doherty. Doherty back to Argenbrock. And a foul will be called on Andrew Yoxel for, for a pick down there. That'll be three on Andrew, isn't it? That would be three. Dylan Crossland will check in for That ref says he moved over and he must have taken a step outward. And yeah. Dylan Crossan checks in for Garrett Pounds. Ball will go back in the hands of Vetter. Vetter on the outside. Back to Schamberg drive. Shot from the corner off the mark. Rebounded by. Block, block, block. Block. Ooh, we got lucky there, guys. I thought it was off of white, so. Yeah, I did too. So, 14-16, Bloit by two. Three minutes, 19 seconds left in the second quarter. We gotta, we're gonna be grinding this out. Yeah, we, we are. Doherty will bring it down to set it up for Minneapolis. Grayson drives, shot in the lane, up, no good. And rebounded by Garrett Pounds. Nice job by Garrett. Back to Argenbright. He drives, shot up, and good. Nice job, Casey Argenbright, as we tie the ball game up at 16. 2.50 left to go in the first half. Finney on the outside. Oh, nice crossover dribble. Good hands by Garrett Doherty. And nearly saves it. He runs out in the hallway. Nice hustle by Garrett Doherty. Glad the door was open. Hopefully nobody was standing right there to get leveled. <laughs> so. They would have lost their popcorn for sure, huh, Dale? Yep. Better on the outside. Gets it over to Nemechek. Nemechek into uh, Jaden Adams, another freshman. Checking in for the first time for Beloit. 
Even check drives. Good hands by Doherty. Tipped out of bounds. Just solid defense being played by both uh, both, both teams. Both squads, yeah, yeah, there really are. 16 all, 226 left in the first half. Finney on the outside, guarded by Argenbride. Finney drives, gets it back to Vetter. Vetter stolen by Garrett Doherty. Garrett with some wheels, throws all the way in. Argenbright, no foul, I can't believe that. Casey drives up and shows. Oh, yes! Nice job, Our Casey Argenbright gets it to roll in. I don't know how we didn't have a foul earlier, but. He had him across the arm. Nice was, job by Argenbright. He was fouling him, tried to get the foul on the floor, actually. Ball goes over in the hands of Nemechek. Nemechek, and it's gonna be a kick. Yes, nice job. As the Garrett turnover. Doherty. Garrett Doherty forces the turnover right there. With the tip away, and then the opponent kicks it out of bounds. What a play there. Schamberg checks in for Hesting. Ball will go in to Garrett Doherty. Lions had the lead, 18 to six. Tight to Doherty. <laughs> Back to Argenbright. Racing for three. And Garrett Doherty will go to the line to shoot a 102. Really Double nice down. ball screen by Garrett Doherty, and they try to fight through the pick. Nemechek with his second personal foul. And Brummer will check back in. Two shot, or double bonus time for Doherty. Off the mark. Alex Yoxel checking in for Dylan Crossan. Second shot coming by Doherty. Shot is up and it's off the mark as well. Back rims them both, Dale. Mike, not enough arch. Usually, if that's the case. Well, we need better. to get back to Nemechek. Those free throws down the hatch. Oh, good job. Right through the hands of Vetter. Okay, I'll tell you, Brummer is, he's a pretty darn good ball player. Yeah. Very physical and at six foot four, uh, pretty solid. He'll check out as checking back in will be Hesting. So trade offense for defense maybe. Yep, keeping him yeah. off the defensive end. He's in harm's way with two fouls. So is uh, Yoxel, who is on, on the, the bench. bench. That's good. He's got three. Minute seven. Garrett Doherty will just sit on it here. <laughs> Coach, both coaches just say, hey, let it go. So, so we will sit here and watch this one as both coaches letting them ride this one out. Lions with an 18 to 16 lead. 45 seconds. We'll wait until, wait until this one gets down to about 11. We'll see some weave going here. Grayson, how big would it be to get Grayson off his snive and get his first you bucket bet. of the half? So, 25 seconds, we're still waiting. Garrett Doherty on the outside. We'll set this one up here in just a few. 18 seconds, like I said, they'll run it at about 11. Well, 12, sorry. Doherty on the left-hand side. Back to Argenbright. Casey drives. Shot up and off the mark. Rebounded by Casey Argenbright. Puts it back up. Good. Yes. Nice job, Casey Argenbright. How big is that? The little guy goes into the trees and pulls one down. Nice job by Casey Argenbright as Minneapolis takes the lead. 20 to 16 at the half. That's really wow. amazing. He slipped back in and got the, rebound, got the rebound and then the stick back was nothing but net. They hardly even contended. Yeah, nice job. Minneapolis takes the lead 20 to 16. We'll be back with some stats. You're listening to 910kna.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 2. Per square foot. All colors in plain or plush styles, including popular 94-ounce carpet. Financing is available at Santa Fe Carpet, four blocks south of St. John's Military School. Welcome back. 20 to 16 here at halftime. Minneapolis with a four-point lead. Stats uh, for the first half. Scoring uh, for Beloit, Luke Schamberg has eight points and leads uh, Beloit in scoring. 
Zach Brummer has five. Marvin Darko has one. Vetter has two. And that's the scoring for Beloit in uh, the foul column. Nemechek has two. Hasting, Hesting has two. Darko has two. Crone has two. And Brummer has two. For Minneapolis, Argenbright just took this club on his shoulders in the second quarter. Leads all scores with 10. Andrew Yoxel, who is in foul trouble with uh, three personal fouls here in the first half, has five points. And I might have uh, six points, excuse me. Nope, that's a zero. Yep, five points. Grayson George, just with one point from the free throw line, has not had uh, really a very good look from the outside at all. Doherty with some big minutes, big steals, and uh, three big points actually played big for us in the first half. Zach Allison has one point. Foul trouble for Minneapolis. Andrew Yoxel with three personal fouls in the first half. Played somewhat in the second quarter with three, but uh, we'll have to watch that because we're not uh, with the uh, the service of Dylan Crossan at 100% just yet. Yeah, we were down by what? Five points at one point in the second quarter, five or six. We I think it was five points. We crawled so. back, tied the game, and then went up by four. So we have scored them 12 to six second quarter. To take the four point advantage. Turnovers wise, Beloit has had nine turnovers in the first half. Minneapolis four, very unofficial on my part. I know I probably missed a few in there, but uh, nice job by uh, both defenses playing pretty good defensive squad. So. So nice job uh, in the first half. Minneapolis has the lead, 20 to 16. We'll be back here in just a little bit. Minneapolis with the lead, 2016. Welcome back, everybody. Minneapolis getting ready to get the second half underway with big second quarter for Minneapolis. Uh, outscoring Beloit 12 to 6 in that second quarter. Beloit had a two point lead going into that quarter. Minneapolis fell behind four or five points came back to take the lead at the end of the half. Starters back on the floor for Minneapolis. Allison, Alex Yoxel, Grayson George, Kyler Macy, and Casey Argenbright as Andrew Yoxel has three personal fouls. Will spend a little bit of time on the bench here to start the second half. For Blory, Darko. Coming in to take the place. Huh? Finney. Crone, Brummer, and Schamberg. Schamberg has the ball for the Trojans as he rolls to the Darko. Darko on the outside. Back to Schamberg. <coughs> Schamberg back to Brummer. Brummer will drive. It's a back to Finney. Back to Brummer. Brummer guarded by Zach Allison with the defense. Back to Finney for a three. That looks good. And it is. 20 to 19, Beloit strikes first. He hit a couple of those up at Beloit, if I remember right. Ball on the outside, back to Macy, back to Alex Yoxel. Macy back to Argenbright. Casey back to Yoxel. And they'll roll the ball on the right hand side, back to Macy. Macy will drive. Picks up his dribble. Oh, that's a tough pass to make in double traffic. Schamberg with the quick shot, and it's good. Schamberg takes the lead as Lloyd has a 5-0 run to take back the lead here in the second half. Ball with Kyler Macy, Kyler on the outside, back to Grayson for three, and it's off the mark. Grayson just not having the shoot tonight tonight. Darko 6-6 right in your face. It'd be a little tough to concentrate, I would think. Schamberg for three, and it looks good. It is. Wow. 9-0 run, or 8-0 run here by Beloit. Back to Argenbright. Casey into Zach Allison. Back to Argenbright. Casey. A little out of sorts by the Lions right now. Grayson drives in. 
Zach Allison with the big rebound, and he gets a nice job. Nice job, Zach Allison. With the big rebound and the putback. Lions get their first points of the second half. Shortly needed basket there as an 8-0 run by Beloit. Beloit has, Beloit has come out on fire, though, here in the second half, and they have, uh, they've hit everything that they've taken here in the second half. They sure have. Grayson George on the outside, back to Zach Allison, back to Argenbright. Casey will drive, backward Alex Yoxel. Shot in the lane and good. Nice job, Alex Yoxel. Goes back to Shamper. Shamper brings it down. Gets it over to Crone. Crone cross to Shamper. Back to Dar back to Brummer. Quick shot off the mark. Rebounded by Grace and George. Back to Argonbrock. Casey will bring it down on the left hand side. He'll drive all the way down. Shot up and no good. And rebounded by Brummer. Back to Darko. Oh, wow, quick move by Darko. Zach Allison, great hustle. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Wow. Zach's called with a foul, but I don't know how. Nice position by Zach. Wow. Zach will pick up his third personal as Garrett Doherty, Garrett Pounds, as well as Dylan Cross and check in for the Lions. Kyler Macy and Grayson George stay on the floor. Crone will inbounds for the Trojans. That score's not right. I wish it was that score, but it's not. Or is it? Is that right? 28 to 24? Yep. Okay. Let's see who had that back last bucket. Grayson for three. Dylan with the rebound. Oh, nice. No, oh, man. How did he not? Garrett Doherty on the outside. Into crossing. Crossing in the lane. It's soft. And there's a foul on Crone. I'll tell you, Darko was so far over the back earlier. Definitely. Crone, his third personal foul. Grayson George inbounds. Grayson gets it into Doherty. Back to Grayson. Shot up and off the mark. Grayson is just not having a night tonight. Everything is just a little bit short and off the mark. Rummer shot up and good as he hits the 12-footer. Six-point lead for the Trojans. They can't miss. They can't hit. They can. They are on fire, and we can't hit the broad side of a barn right now. So, ball off of Crone's hands will stay with the Lions. Casey Argenbright will check in for Kyler Macy. Andrew Yox will get in his first action as he checks in for Grayson George. Dylan Cross, sorry. Oh, Grayson's going to inbound. Sorry about that. Gets it to Argon, right? Casey on the right-hand side. This Even Nemechek has done a good job on the defense on Grayson. Yep. Good call there. Okay, he made that one, so it didn't count, but he at least got it to go through. So yep. He's ready to go. He's ready to go now. Third foul on Nemechek. Grayson inbounds. Gets it to Andrew Yoxel. Back to Doherty. Back to... Argenbride, Casey on the right-hand side, back to Grayson for three. Oh. Makes it, but it doesn't count because we had a hold on Garrett Pounds, I believe. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, yeah, three ball down the hatch and it doesn't count. Doesn't count. Schamberg with the ball as he'll bring it down for the Trojans. Nice defense by Andrew Yoxel. Back to Brummer for three. Two. He hits a big one, but it's uh, luckily it's a two. So Andrew Yoxel. Back to Argenbright. Casey will set it up. 
Eight point lead for the Trojans and they are on fire and we can't hit the broad side of a barn right now, guys. Or at least can't get it to count and it'll count. <laughs> Thank you very much. Casey Argenbright gets the ball bucket and the foul. He'll get the line for the end one. Didn't see who that foul on Schamberg, I Schamberg. believe. Hesting will check in for Bloyd as Schamberg will check out. Argenbright also checking in for the shooter when he gets a chance. Darko checks back in for, for uh, Nemechek. Alex Oxel checks in for Grayson George. 32 to 26. Casey and one is good. Nice job by Argenbright. Wow. The official screwed up on that one. He made the bucket, and they, uh, Casey was walking to the bench to come out. Better gets the bucket underneath. So. Tell you guys, Beloit cannot miss this second quarter, third quarter. And Andrew Yoxel back to Arden Bright. Back to Pounds. Back to Arden Bright. Casey will set this one up. Shot up and good by Garrett Doherty. Nice job by Garrett. Little runner on the left-hand side in the lane is good. Nice job, Garrett Doherty. Finney brings it down for Bloyd. Oh, great hands by Argenbright. Nearly gets the steal. Back to Darko. Darko on the outside. Back to Vetter. Three-point shot is off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Andrew Yoxel. Back to Doherty. Doherty will go the line. Nice job, Garrett Doherty. He'll get fouled and go the line. Not sure who that one's on. We'll find out though. Better. As Doherty will shoot two from the line. 34 to 29. Wholesale substitutions coming in by both squads. And Good. Doherty makes the first one. Dylan Crossan, Kyler Macy, and Grayson George check in for the Lions. As Argenbright, Alex Oxel, and Pounds check out. And I didn't get all the players that came in for Beloit. Crone was one of them. Crone and Schamberg, I believe. Second one is up and good by Doherty. Nice job, Garrett Doherty. Minute 43 in the quarter. Schamberg guarded by Macy. Back to Vetter. Vetter back to Crone. Crone back to, back on the outside to Hesting. Back to Better back to Crone. Picks up his dribble. Back to Schamberg. Schamberg drives. Back to Darko. Oh, he walks! Jeez. Thank you very much. Three times he did. He walked before he even started, and then his jump stopped. He took another step. <laughs> he took another step on the scoop shot. When you're six foot five, you can do that, can't you? <laughs> I guess you can tonight. <laughs> Garrett Doherty will bring it down for the Lions. Back to Alex Oxel. Back to Kyler Macy. Macy on the outside. Darko just shadowing Grayson George very close. Minneapolis will set this one back with 52 seconds, trailing by three. And they will pull him out. They're Back to Doherty. Doherty will roll to the right hand side, back to the left. He'll pull his dribble back out with 27 seconds. Back to Dylan Cross and back to Doherty. 20 seconds left. Doherty with 12. Now he'll run it. Back to Kyler Macy. Back to Grayson. Grayson in the lane. Can't get it to fall. And oh, he Darko. called the ball. Well, he's Grayson getting his shot, but he's altering his shot. Ball. I've never seen him shoot a one-hand shot all year long, and I've seen three of them tonight. So Darko is uh, doing a good job defensively against yeah. Grayson. Lloyd outscores us that quarter, and they take the three-point lead. 
34 to 31 at the end of three. We'll be back after this work. Where do you go when you need groceries? Jeans IGN, of course. Jeans is proud to be a sponsor of Minneapolis Sports and hopes that you'll encourage your children to be as competitive in the classroom as they are in sports. Jeans IGA, a proud sponsor of today's game. Tonight's game coverage is brought to you by Santa Fe Carpet, where a new carpet starts at a buck fifty per square foot. Santa Fe Carpet now has Soft Sense by Bliss, the softest, smartest carpet ever in 48 colors. Salina's bottom line carpet price, Santa Fe Carpet, four blocks south of St. John's Military School. And welcome back to Minneapolis High School. The Lions will have Kyler Macy, Dylan Crossan, Andrew Yoxel, Grayson George, and Casey Argenbright, Darko, Schamberg, Finney, Brummer, and Crone on it, the floor for the Trojans. Argenbright rolls the right-hand side. Gets it back to Grayson. Grayson, and he'll have it tipped out of bounds off a block. It'll stay with Minneapolis. Oh, Crone, quit acting. You tipped it. 34 to 31. Back to Argenbright. Back to Casey. Casey drives. This is man up in the air. Shot up in. Can't get it to fall. Brummer with the big rebound. That, that basket has just not been friendly to us here in the second half. That was a walk. Benny for three. Off the mark. Darko with the rebound. And everything is going below its way right now. And a big bucket by Brummer right there. 36 to 31. Lloyd with the lead. Back to Grayson. Grayson on the outside. And just not working for us right now, guys. Got to get that there. In the lane of everything, and we're just not, cannot seem to find any way to shut them down right now. Thank you very much. Casey Argenbright does a nice job of stepping in front of Schamberg. Schamberg will pick up his third foul, I think. Schamberg, Dylan Crossan will check out as Zach Allison checks in. One point for Grayson tonight. Wow. And he's had five that were taken away because of <laughs> because of mistakes that we've had. Yeah. So, uh, Argenbright on the outside. Back to Zach Allison. Back to Kyler. Back to Casey. Casey will drive. And he'll be fouled by Heston. His third personal. Hasting just cannot stay with Casey. Casey's burning two or three times on the drive. Yeah. Ball goes in now. Andrew Oxley back to Grayson for three. Man. Wow. Andrew Oxley mugged down there. Ball goes out of bounds off of Beloit. Great rebound by Andrew Oxley. Sure was. That shot by Grayson was awful close. Yep. He's had two of them just ram out. Zach Allison back to Andrew Yoxel, back to Argenbright. Casey back to Grayson. Grayson on the outside goes into Andrew. Shot up and good. Oh, nice, pretty shot by Andrew Yoxel. And how big is that one? We need that in the worst way. Time for Andrew to do his thing here in the fourth quarter. Testing drives back to Crone. Crone backward to Finney, Finney drives, back to Brummer for three. It's off the mark, but off the mark, and Darko comes away with it. No way. Darko gets the bucket and the foul. Wow. Grayson George picks up his first personal, and Darko will go to the line for the and one. Putting them back up by five, 
Shot is up and it's off the mark. Rebounded by Grayson George back to Ardenburg. Grayson on the Casey will bring it down. Shot up and he'll be fouled by Finney. And Casey will go to the line to shoot two. Only his first foul. So Casey at the line. Shot is up and off the back of the rim. Chamber checking back in for Vetter. Boy, they are deep. Now, for Crone, Vetter stays in, Crone comes in. Yeah, they are. Second shot is up and good by Ardenbright as Garrett Doherty will check in for Casey Ardenbright. 5.37 left to go in the ball game. Four point lead for Beloit. As Schamberg will bring it down, guarded by Doherty. They had done a very much better job of controlling the turnovers Beloit has. That's the key. In the second half, they've only got one turnover. We've done a very good job with it too, but uh, uh, Beloit's hit everything under the sun and we've not been able to get much to fall. Brummer, swing pass over to Darko. Darko, ah, grab the ball. Off of Minneapolis, it'll stay with Beloit. Tipped out of there by Darko and then it went right through the hands of Minneapolis. It will be Beloit's ball. Schamberg, the inbounds. It's back to Darko, Darko. Back to Vetter, Vetter on the outside. Shot off the mark, Brummer. We'll go to the line to shoot two. Brummer gets position down there and has Zach Allison sealed off. And Zach's fourth personal foul. Brummer at the line for two. Shot is up and good. It's also time for number 33 to come back to life and give us a strong final five minutes. We can use Dylan down low. Second shot coming. It's up and it is good. He makes them both. 40 to 34. Beloit with a six point lead. Five minutes left to go in this ball game. Doherty back to Yoxel. Yoxel on the outside. Back to Garrett Doherty. Back to Kyler Macy. Macy back to Grayson. Grayson drives. Shot up and good. Finally, Grayson gets a bucket. His first one of the ninth. The counts. <laughs> Schamberg drives. Back to Finney. He'll drive. Back to Schamberg. Schamberg back to Finney for three. Off the mark. And it's off of Dylan Crossan. Stepped out of bounds. They'll stay with Boyd. Good hustle, Brummer and Dylan. Oh, yeah. Going after that loose ball. Timeout called by Beloit. It's a full timeout, so we will go ahead and take one with them. Beloit with the lead, 40 to 36. 428 left to go in this ball game. And uh, guys, we're gonna have to find a way to uh, find get back offense. in this, find some offense. The only thing in our favor on that scoreboard right now, scoreboard now is that they have seven fouls, we have four. Right. So so tough At one Robertson here. Monument, they believe that supporting community activities is very important. That's why they're sponsors of Lion Sports. Minneapolis is a great town to live in, and Robertson Monument hopes you make it to as many games as possible. At Lambert Insurance, Sue Clinton can make shopping for insurance easy. With insurance plans changing all the time and costs increasing constantly, getting coverage you need at affordable rates can be a challenge. Let Lambert Insurance in Minneapolis help. Welcome back to Minneapolis. Bloyd will have the ball underneath their own bucket. Casey Arden, Mark Grayson, George Dillon Crossan, Andrew Oxel, and Garrett Doherty on the floor for the Lions. Brummer to inbounds for Bloyd. They go into Darko. 
Darko guarded by Grayson George. Boy, he is, he is so quick. Almost quick enough that he, he travels with the ball, cousin. it? Finney. So is Finney. <laughs> yeah, Finney takes it all the way in and gets the bucket. Casey drives in the lane, up and good. Nice job. He isn't done yet, is he? No, Casey's not. Schamberg's fourth personal? Yes. Yeah, good deal. Crone will come in for him. 4.04 left to go in this ball game. Crone checks in for Schamberg. Casey at the line for the end one. Casey. Up and good. <laughs> it was flat, but it was it rolled in. No, nice that's job. a big and one. We're down yeah. to a one possession ball game now. 42 to 39. Minneapolis picks up a press. Finney on the outside, guarded by Argerbrun. Finney rolls down the right hand side and gets it back to Brummer. Brummer back to Darko. 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 Darko guarded by Grayson George. Nice hands by Andrew Yoxel. Yoxel mugged by Better. No call. <laughs> Ball comes back the other direction. Argon right to set it up. Minneapolis has a chance to tie this one or get to within two, one. Oh, there we go. Back to Argon Bright. Casey shot up and off the mark. Andrew Yoxel off of black. It'll stay with Minneapolis. Grayson passed up an open well, three. Well, I thought he was going to crank it up, two. but he just didn't feel like he was in a groove yet. He has hit one, but it didn't count. Back to Doherty, back to Argenbright, into Yoxel. Yoxel backs his man in, shot up and no good, and rebounded by Grayson. Nice job, Grayson George, to come away with that one. Back to Argenbright, 2.58 left to go in this ball game. Grayson shot up and no good. Rebounded by Finney. Finney. Rolls down. Shot up and good by the better. And they can't miss, Mike. This is not right. <laughs> Grace, Casey Argenbright taking it on his shoulders. He's trying to keep his back in this thing. And he gets another bucket in the lane, 44 to 41. Finney with the ball, and he'll be fouled by Casey Argenbright. Fifth team foul. Second on Casey. Yep. Garrett Doherty, excuse me, uh, Dylan Crossan and Kyler Macy check in for Zach Allison and Garrett Doherty. Brummer. We need to stop here in the West Yeah, we do. Schamberg back in for Beloit. Schamberg guarded by Macy. Schamberg drives, kicks it down low to Vetter. Back to Brummer. Shot off the mark, rebounded by Grayson. Grayson has the numbers. He's going to push it. And oh, cannot get it to fall. Nice job, Grayson. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Grayson just can't get him to fall tonight. But that's fine. He gets to the free throw line. Penny with the oh, undercut. Second. Ninth team foul. Double bonus from here on. Grayson off the yeah. back of the rim. Second shot coming. Shot is up and good. He makes that one. 44 to 42. Once again, Mike, we got to stop him on the defensive side right here. Two point game here. And we're under two minutes. Schamberg drives back to Vetter, back to Schamberg. Schamberg back, oh, wide open Spinney for three. And he nails it. You can't tell by the crowd. We're in Beloit crowd here, and he nails it right there. Timeout called by Beloit. We will take one with them. 47 to 42, minute 50 left to go in this ball game. Lions trail by five. I'm Mackey College Salina, along with Fox News Talk, KINA.
will be helping bring you coverage of all MHS football games and boys and girls basketball, along with some volleyball, wrestling, baseball, and softball events. Eagle Communications, home of ECTV, high-speed internet, 910 KINA News Talk, and 99 KG Country, proud sponsors of Lions Sports Coverage. Listen to the live broadcast on 910KINA.com or on your local Eagle Cable Channel 8. Welcome back to Minneapolis Trails by 5, 47, 42 minute 50 left to go in this. Beloit has the lead and has really controlled this second half, Mike. Well, they've controlled the whole ball game, I think. Uh, their defense has been superb on uh, Grace and George all night long uh, with Darko shadowing him all night long. It's just been uh, a tough, tough thing for Grayson to get any space at all. And I don't think we've played that well. We've uh, had some mental mistakes and turnovers that have cost us dearly. Uh, yeah. Now on Andrew Yoxel, a moving screen. And Floyd will have the ball. It's the fourth foul on Andrew. So Floyd will send in Schamberg and Vetter. And minute 37 left. Beloit has the lead and the ball. Darko to inbounds. Lions will try to pick up. They'll pick up the full court press. Schamberg. Right now, Beloit's got this one in their hand. And Grayson gets the steal. Grayson gets the bucket. Nice no call down there. Grayson gets the bucket to fall. Up, trails by three. And timeout called by Beloit's coach. Minute 15, 47 to 44. Beloit with the lead. Three point deficit, minute 15, Mike. You know, Minneapolis picked knees to tighten up that defense. I mean, just go all out, and they did right there. Grayson with a nice interception. He almost got undercut down there. I know he kind of fell down, but uh, probably a good no call. Minneapolis yeah. just, it's a one possession game, plenty of time, so. We can still do this. We got to shut them down, though. We yep. can't let them score again. And exactly we got to right. play the tight defense. And right now, they've been lights out here in the second half. You know, we don't keep track of percentages, but uh, I don't know that they, they haven't missed much. They haven't missed much. Here in the second half. So, Boy will have the ball midcourt on Minneapolis side, on the on our home side. <clears throat> Rummer to inbounds. Oh, wide open goes to Schamberg. Schamberg drives in the lane, up and good. Ball goes back to Argenbright. Casey will bring it down for the lines. Casey drives, and it's stolen by Vetter. And Beloit won. What was that, Mike? Foul on Grayson George. That's going to about. That's going to just about do it, guys. 49 to 44. Now I'm being negative. Better the freshman at the line to shoot a one on one. So. so they're still discussing this one, trying to figure out who they don't want better at the line, so they're saying it was somebody else. It's, Trying to decide who got fouled. They thought maybe number 33, Schamberg, got fouled, but I guess they're putting better at the line. Kind of a strange deal. Yeah. Shot is up, and it is good. Makes it anyway. So, wow. 50 to 46, six point deficit, minute two left. Second shot is up, and it is off the mark. Rebounded by Andrew Yoxel. Back to Argenbach. Back to Kyler Macy. Kyler, we cannot let this one get away here. Grayson shot in the lane up and good. Timeout called by Minneapolis. 50 to 46, four point deficit. 49.7 seconds left. We've got to have a stop, Mike. I think. He's probably going to foul right away. I think we're going to put him at the free throw line. Uh, we need to find out who's their worst free throw shooter. Hopefully he gets the ball in his hands. You don't want to let this clock go too far uh, 
with a four point deficit, you need possibly to get a uh, free throw to miss by the, the opponents. If you do, then you're back in business. Uh, three and you're, you've got a two point ball game, but you know, you've got to have somebody miss at the free throw line. Yeah, absolutely. On the floor for the Lions is Argenbright, Macy, Grayson, Crossan, and Yoxel. Bloy will inbounds here. Lions can pick up a full court press. And Shamberg drives all the way down. And, and he'll be fouled right there. That's not necessarily who you want to foul, but uh, that's who had, had the ball. So Shamberg. Of course, your opponent puts the ball in the hands of the guy that's uh, one of the better free throw shooters. Exactly. But, uh, Let's hope for a miss here. Only six seconds went off the clock there, so this game could get long here. It could. Yeah, it could. Paul Schamberg at the line for a one on one. And it's good. Has he missed from the line tonight? Nope. He's due. He's due. Is up and it is good. He makes them both. Back to a six point deficit. One goes into Argon, right? Casey brings it down. Back to Grayson for three. Nice rebound by Cross and no! Oh. He's old feet. And Grayson drains a three. <laughs> it's kind of the way our luck has gone. Uh, it has been not a good night tonight. He's hit two of them. That uh, haven't counted. Count it. Boy, the inbounds gets it. Foul him right there. There you go. Casey will foul Finney, and Finney will go to the line the other direction. The junior will see how much ice is running through his veins. 52 to 46. We've missed opportunity after opportunity, Mike. Andrew Yoxel gets in for Garrett Pounds. Finney at the line. First shot is up, and it is, of course, good. Second shot coming. Up and it is no good. Rebound by Andrew Oxel. Back to Argenbrock. 33 seconds left. Back to Doherty. Shot up and good by Doherty. 53 to 48. Five point deficit. But 27.8 seconds left. It is. Deloitte's hitting their free throws down the stretch. They it's are. Hard. It's going to be hard. Right? We coached a loss and a miss in there by Finney, but it's still a little bit too late. Got to get a steal on an inbounds or. A Got to get a turn quick somehow. Turn around right yeah, here. Quick turnover or steal. If you can't, you got to foul right away. And as you mentioned, Lloyd's uh, been pretty sharp at the charity strike. Yeah, they have been. They've been solid all night long. And they will have the ball. Minneapolis on the defensive side. They'll try to get a quick steal or a quick foul. If not, And they don't. That's going to that's gonna send Shamberg the other direction and the foul by, I'm not sure why. Yeah, they couldn't get better down here. They tried. They wouldn't call it. Shamberg will go to the line. They'd hit two more, I'm sure. Better has missed a couple free throws. So yeah, he might have been your choice. Yeah. And a freshman. Shamberg, a senior. Probably been him, there before. You expect him to make these. Shot is up and it is good. <laughs> Andrew Yoxel and Derek Gordy check in for Macy and Pounds. Second shot coming. 
That's good. Well, well, you really need to hit try a three right here. If you could get a three down the hatch, uh, this is still doable. But if you, the two is there, but five point deficit. Right. And we just, we can't, we don't have enough time at 14.5. We're trying, but Casey's had a phenomenal night. We just have not, uh, it's gonna be hard with 14.5. And now we're gonna have to, now we kind of place it in the opponent's hands in southeast of Saline and and who else they play? The public county. The public county for the league. For the league, but you can't. Uh, um, well, we should. Team. Depending if we. Depending if we uh, uh, win out, we should have a no, still have a number one seed. Yeah, uh, we're pretty safe there. I think. Piece of paper here. Yeah. Almost smart. 17 and 1. 17 to 1. Beloit will be 13, 13, 14 and 4 if we lose tonight. Or 13 and 4 for Beloit. 14 and 3, excuse me. 14 and 3. If we lose tonight. So we would just have to beat Russell to assure that number one. File them. There you go. Thank you very much, Casey. Better will walk the other one way to shoot two here. 55 to 50. So, 12.7 seconds left, and they got to give Beloit credit. They hit their shots tonight. Yeah, they came out in the second half, and as you mentioned, they're shooting the lights out. Better with a big mess there. So. Darko, why don't you step in there, buddy? Step in after he gets the ball. Make a, make a mistake. <laughs> Shot is up, and he mix, makes that one. Casey will bring it down. Garrett Doherty for three. And it's over the back, so. That's gonna end it here. 56 to 50, Beloit will come away with the victory. And absolutely hate this with a passion. So, Andrew Yoxel fouls out. Crone will go to the line shoot two here. Shot is up and it is off the back of the rim, no good. You don't know how bad I'd like to just give another goose egg to Crone, and that would be all he had tonight, but he can make some. Casey will bring it down. Shot for three, up and good. He hits it, but that's too late. Casey has a phenomenal night, but uh, just was not enough as Lions are gonna lose to Beloit. Uh, how frustrating is that? So, only thing I can say is that if we meet them again in Substate, it's hard to beat a team three times. Yeah, I don't know that we. The fortunate thing about Substate right now is that they would have to play Riley County to get to us in the championship. Yeah. And Riley County, I don't know. I don't know much about Riley County. They're so, pretty good. So, I don't know. So, if they, if they get through Riley County, they'll deserve to the play us. Yeah. That's what, I, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, of course, we will, uh, Norton knocked us off a few years ago. Of course, they went on to state, win state, I think. So, anyway. Minneapolis it's comes not up. the same Norton team. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank goodness. We uh, fall short tonight. We will take a break. And it won't be on their home floor. Yeah. We will take a break, and Michael has some stats, but not uh, not our best night tonight. So. so, Minneapolis comes up short tonight, so we will we'll be, back. be back. Welcome back to Minneapolis, Kansas. As we split one tonight, the girls come away with a big victory, but the boys come up short against uh, uh, 
Uh, that's our nemesis this year. Our only two losses have been to Beloit, and they've uh, they've known what to do to take care of us, and they do it tonight. Well, they did a great job defending uh, Grayson George, our leading scorer. Grayson scores at about a 17, 18 points per ball game, and held him down uh, quite a bit in the first half. He did get loose for two or three buckets in the second half. Scoring for Beloit, Luke Schamberg leads the Beloit in scoring with 21 points. Zach Brummer had 13. Slate Crone had one. Marvin Darko had three. But uh, played some pretty good defense on uh, Grace and George. Vetter, freshman, had eight. And I thought the key to the ball game was Finney in the second half had 11 points. Uh, pretty much uh, his outside shooting two threes uh, cooked our goose. But uh, Minneapolis scoring Andrew Yoxel at seven. Grayson George had eight. Garrett Doherty, I thought the key to us being close was Doherty with nine points. Zach Allison had three points. Alex Yoxel had two. And leading all scorers tonight, Casey Argenbright put this team on his shoulders and uh, gave it everything he had. He ended yeah. up with 24 points. Nice job by, uh, by, uh, by Garrett Doherty. He did a great job tonight. And, uh, just dang near took this one on his shoulders and, and helped us to come away with a victory, but just not enough. And just, uh, you know, it just uh, overall, I, I felt like Casey just did a phenomenal job. Just couldn't, couldn't get it all done by himself. A well, big game for the ladies. They come out of here with a victory and a uh, big victory. They hadn't beat Beloit since 2006, and it had been a long drought, and the girls played rather well at times to, uh, uh, to get the victory over the Lady Trojans. They just have not been able to do that. Boys, however, had a little tough sledding. Darko, a 6'6", 6'5", 6'6", presence is a very good defender long, for his size. Long arms, but yeah, you're right. Very, very good, defender, very good defender, defender, and he was right in uh, Grayson George's grill all night long. Grayson did get loose in the second half and got three baskets in the fourth quarter. But before then, he had uh, not too much to show for his evening. To his credit, uh, a couple of two or three mistakes by Minneapolis as he was shooting uh, he cans at least two, maybe three, uh, three-pointers that did not count. Yeah, two three-pointers for sure and one field goal, a two-point field goal. But, yeah, right there alone, you know, those, how big are those right there? So. Yeah, Minneapolis with a turnover at that point in time and uh, turned it right back over to Bloy. The basket that Grayson made in those instances, uh, two or three for sure, uh, went in, but they did not count. Yeah. And hats off to hats off to Beloit. I struggle saying that, but hats off Beloit. They came out and they executed offensively, and they hit just darn near everything uh, in the that second quarter. Yeah, the third quarter especially. And uh, and that I really felt like we may without uh, without. Uh, uh, oh, I'm just looking down. Uh, Plus, you made mention, Scott, Bloyd limited their turnovers in the second half and per, uh, played, you know, pretty air-free uh, basketball throughout. And we were playing catch-up all the second half trying to uh, get back in this thing. But good grief, an 8-0 run coming right out of the locker room uh, to start the second half, and we find ourselves down five, six points right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, – uh, we had the lead at the half, and they just came out with a big run. To uh, to start the uh, start the second half, and, and that's uh, basically the difference. Well, you kind of hold help to or try to uh, keep uh, your winning ways at home. Minneapolis uh, struggled a little bit here tonight. Beloit is the only team that uh, has beat us all year long up there and here. I was kind of thinking this would be the one here. Uh, to beat the uh, the almighty Trojans. I thought us at home and Dylan back, we would have 
pretty good chance to do it. But you know, Beloit's team, if you look up and down that roster, they are deep. They're they a basketball deep. team. They, they played uh, eight, nine kids. And uh, gosh, there's, there's eight, nine kids off the bench are pretty good. Better, a freshman, played very good. And uh, it's just tough to when a team's got that kind of depth. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, and they, and they, uh, and their depth hit. You know, I'm looking down their scoring column. They, they, uh, they had some kids that. Uh, how much? How many Chamber? Twenty. Twenty-one. Wow. Yeah. Chamber well, was just. He was pretty solid tonight. Solid from the free throw line. When he got to the free throw line, I don't think he missed all night long. And that's what you want your senior leader to do. And you mentioned it. He's a senior. He'll make these free throws because, you know, we knew he'd been there uh, many times before. Uh, Schamberg steps right up to the line and uh, makes every free throw down the stretch. Yeah. yeah. Six out of six. Six out of six, yeah. yeah. That's that's the big thing is they hit them down the stretch. So, so Minneapolis comes up short tonight. We're still uh, Coach Shoots wanting to come up here and talk, but he keeps getting sidetracked. So we will keep it here for a few more minutes. You know, Darko is not a, just a big score, but for his size, he's got, uh, he's very agile. He's, uh, he's got lateral movement. He can defend. But as you mentioned, Scott, he is long. He is. He is and long. Uh, he's 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Those arms are very, very long, and uh, he's a good defender. Yeah. Hey, Coach. There's no question about it. Coach Shoup joins us up here right now. Uh, um, tough loss tonight. Uh, we'll step into a positive first, and that's Casey Ardenbright. Casey mm -hmm. Casey had a great gutsy performance tonight. Mm -hmm. Carried us. He did. He really Carried did. Us, and, uh, Casey's a competitor. He did. And I, if we'd had everybody else doing what Casey's doing, we probably still would have won as bad as we played defensively because Casey was being aggressive and going in the room and, and nobody else would. But, uh, you know, that's my fault. I guess I just didn't have us ready to go. And coming out of halftime, I definitely didn't have us ready to go. That's probably as bad a defense as we played. And, and Beloit took advantage of it. you got to give them credit. They, uh, they knocked a lot of shots down. So well, yeah, I, I, Their percentage had to be absolutely yep. phenomenal in the third quarter especially. Yep. I thought Garrett Doherty had a good ball game for you. Come out and uh, got some uh, bench scoring there. But uh, I thought the key was uh, that uh, Finney kid in the second half, we oh, just yeah. had a hard time finding him. He <laughs> knocks down a couple trays and yeah. and he was just pretty solid, for, yeah. pretty uh, slick little guard, but uh, yeah. we had a hard time finding him right at yeah. no doubt coming about out of the locker room. No doubt about it. But, uh, well, I mean, that's, you got you to gotta play better than what we did tonight against a good team like that. And, those are the things that happen when you don't. Uh, they get rolling a little bit. They've got good players. Uh, they're deep. They're deep. They're long. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you, there, there's not, for us, uh, against a team like that, there's not a huge margin of error that we can we can have on the rebounding or the defensive end. And, and um, we were just a little bit off enough tonight to yeah. have made the difference. We so. had a great run in the uh, – I felt like it was getting out of hand early in the second mm -hmm. quarter. We, we capitalized, we mm -hmm. regained, we did some good sure. things. We got the halftime lead, yep. and I thought, okay, we've kind of got a rhythm going. Right. But they came out, and uh, it was just like that. They had scored eight points, yep. and we I don't even know if we had gotten a shot off. Maybe yeah. gotten a shot off, but it was. Yep. Uh, so. Yeah, I thought initially about calling a timeout, and then I thought, you know what? We're seniors and juniors. This is, I mean, they're. It's yeah. not an X's and O's thing, yeah. and they know it. Those kids know it. They don't need me to tell them. And, uh, you know, I thought, like, we were an experienced enough team. We'd step up and defend a little better. The offense got better. We attacked. We played tough. But we defense, we never quite got things done. And, and uh, you know, that's all right. It, it doesn't hurt us for sub-state seeding, it, it, but it, it, we lose the opportunity to win the league title outright. Now we got to depend on somebody else to – to stand, you know, to get them, yep. and it might happen. Yeah, I know Boyd expended a lot of energy tonight, but I mean, they've got two tough road games coming up. But you never like to, you know, Depend let it come down else. to that. So. Well, Coach, uh, your voice is wearing thin on you, so yeah. we'll we'll let you go. Uh, uh, tough loss tonight. I 
I, I don't know. I just absolutely hate losing to Bloyd. Well, <laughs> I really thought with uh, Dylan back uh, on the floor, but uh, not 100% yet, but uh, he gets back in the swing of things, and we get his six to ten points down low and mm -hmm. uh, rebounds. Yeah. I know you're trying to save him a little bit, yeah. and uh, I think when he gets back to 100%, we're uh, – but I, I – kind of liked our chances when I saw him warming up. I go, I think I, yeah. with us at home, this is going to be a good ball game, but I thought we'd have a pretty yeah. good chance to win it. And we did. We did. We, uh, we still had a chance to win this thing. But, you know, I told the kids we give up 41 points and a half. I was like, you got to be kidding me. And I said, but I told them the bigger thing is you gave up 41 points and a half and you still almost, I mean, you're right there to the end. To the end. In the game, I said, so my gosh, if you play some defense, what's the outcome? Yeah, you gave up so, 15 in about three oh, and a half, three and a half minutes. I yeah, mean, it was and, just. And even after it slowed down, it never stopped. I mean, they still <laughs> kept getting what they wanted, so. And Scott had mentioned that they were shooting the ball rather well there in the second half. I don't, mm -hmm. they didn't yeah, miss they too were, many. No, they didn't. They didn't they miss didn't. many. Well, Coach, uh, we'll be back uh, on the air Tuesday night to uh, finish out our last, well, not our last home game because we'll host the first round of Substate, but yeah, uh, Tuesday night here against Russell. Or, uh, yeah, Russell here. So uh, as we head forward to that, uh, uh, you know, a tough loss tonight, but mm -hmm. you look past it, that's it's it happens. I'll tell you what, it, uh, it doesn't bother me one bit. I, I told our kid, I, what bothers me is how we played. I, the loss, I don't care about it all. It's not necessarily I told them, yeah, I th hey, we've never gone to state with one loss. And I said, the reason why you don't go to state with one loss is because you'll pull crap like this in the semifinals <laughs> or the finals <laughs> exactly because you right. don't know any better. I said, now exactly you know better. Right. So. You know, and the other thing, the other thing I, I like is if we had to play him again. We'll play him again. I mean, I'm not worried about it one bit. I'm not worried about that one and at all. I told them yeah. 41 points isn't going to be what they get in the game either. So yeah, I'd, I'll uh, tell you, I don't. Uh, it, I I think there's a very very strong chance that we'll play them again. Oh, absolutely. And this one we'll take. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, Coach, uh, congrats. Uh, thank Thanks. you for coming up and talking Thanks. to us, buddy. Thanks, Coach. Thank we appreciate you. you, buddy. Minneapolis comes away uh, with a loss, but they went on the girls' side. Uh, as we will finish it up here tonight for. Yeah, any final comments, Mike? Well, you kind of saw it too. I thought uh, Bloyd's game plan. Uh